Woo, here we go, eighth grade, lesson 32. Um, I can identify the probability and odds of something happening. Hopefully you know by now we're doing problems one through 20. Um, so go ahead and get this little graph written down. We write probability as zero to one, uh, where zero being kind of impossible, not kind of, it is impossible, and one being that it's going to happen. Um, anything kind of between zero and one half is like unlikely. Uh, anything over one half is it's pretty likely that that is going to happen. Um, to find the probability, we're going to have the number or the, the thing that we want, and the total is going to be on the bottom. So, for example, I got this spinner right here, and let's say I want to spin it once, and I want to know what's the probability? What's the probability of getting A? Well, the probability of getting A, there's only one A on there out of four. So the probability of getting A would be one-fourth. What about the probability of A or B? Well, the probability of A is one-fourth, and B is also one over four. So that would be one-fourth plus one-fourth, which is equal to one-half. Again, one over the total, one over two. We can kind of see where that one-half is coming from. Um, so again, probability, we're really focused on um, what we want divided by the total. Um, another thing we're going to be talking about is odds. Odds is very similar to probability, but it's the ratio of favorable to unfavorable. So if I asked you, what would be the odds that you're going to land on A for that spinner? Well, that would be 1, because there's 1A, one 2, 1, 2, 3, because there's three other options. So, again, odds does not include the total. It includes what you want to what you don't want. So the odds of landing on A or B would be 2 to 2, because there's 2 for A and B, and there's 2 unlikely. So, again, odds um, is a little bit different. Or really focused on that probability. Let me see if I can find another um, example. I'm gonna look at number four. Nathan flips a coin three times. Predict which is more likely that he will get heads at least once or that he will not get heads at least once. Find the probability of getting heads at least once. Find the probability of not getting heads at least once. Okay, so let's write this out similar to how they have it. So we got our first toss. And hopefully you know um, that we can only get heads or tails. Okay. Second toss. Well, if we got heads the first time, we can get heads or tails. Same thing right here. Heads or tails. We can hit tails the first time and then heads, tails, tails, heads, 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 tails. Those are kind of all of our options. Because we get that third one, though, we're really adding a whole bunch of stuff. So H, T, all of these our options h t h t so let's 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 write all these down so this first one we got h h h h h t h t h h t t so that's all of them with h on the first part one two three Four. So we should have four starting with T too. So T H H T H T T T H T T T. So these are all of the options. As we can see, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I want to know what is the probability my focus on B of getting heads at least once? Um, okay. Well, that has a heads. How many of these have heads? Um, almost all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of eight. So getting heads at least once would be seven out of eight because there's seven possibilities out of eight total. Find the probability of not getting heads at least once. Well, that would be the opposite. That would be one out of eight because there is one option, not heads. That would be one out of eight. Um, again, I would do number one, but I'm out of space. So you're going to be doing problems one through 20. Please zoom with me. Reach out to me if you need help. I'm here to help you. Uh, good luck.